Hey, hey, got a new model, going to start building it and this is a totally new model to me. I haven't done any of the work on it and I can't wait to get stuck into it. I've never built a truck, so let's have a go. Okay, so box is open. It actually made me laugh. I've never seen, like I've never built a proper truck kit before and everything seems so huge relative to the 24th and 25th scale cars so I'm definitely excited about this one. I still haven't decided what colour I'm going to paint it but I'll um, see if I can figure that out as I put the chassis together. If you've ever seen that episode of um, Mr. Bean where he gets that model warship, you know, and he's got all the pieces of it on the sprue, you'll know what's going through my mind right now. It looks awesome. Everything's so big. Okay, so I've made some progress on the engine. I think it's coming together nicely. to get started on the wheels. Okay, so I've got the wheels together for the the rear wheels. Um, I haven't decided what colour I'm going to paint the centres. Um, I'll look at some pictures and decide. So the next step is I'm going to I'm going to tidy up a little bit of the flash just on the edges and then I'm going to scuff the wheels lightly with like a, a very fine sandpaper and then I'm going to apply uh, the Tamiya panel liner inside the rims and hopefully, um, I mean they look really good already but see how they come out with those steps done. The other thing I wanted to point out is when you, um, and I point it out because I've stuffed it up in, in years past, if you use side cutter, you know, type things, just be careful, you know, if you're trying to pop a chrome rim or something like that off a sprue, don't use these too close because they act like to where it joins the part because they actually crush the plastic a bit and if you use them really close it can bunch up the chrome plating so I try if I'm going to use these I'll cut them quite a way up like you know four or five millimeters up the sprue to get the part off and then I'll clean it up with my exacto blade but yeah just I just thought I'd point out don't use these too close particularly to chrome parts when you're taking them off the sprues. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to paint the engine. When I looked online, a lot of them seem to have been either painted or repainted in like a dark gray. So I could paint it by hand. I'm gonna have a go with a rattle can just to see if it makes it a bit quicker, otherwise I'd just pick it out with a brush. Uh, I'll start by priming it with Tamiya um, Rattle Can Primer. Um, which I have somewhere here. Something like that. And then I think what I'll do, because I've only got a light, well I've got haze grey and I've got other colours, I've got matte black. So I think what I'll do is I'll prime it and then I'll put some matte black down, um, which is a paint, not a primer. And in theory, 
I will then start doing mist coats over it with haze grey and hopefully the black will give me shadows um, and then I can put a wash on the engine anyway to to give it a bit of, a bit of texture or to, to highlight some of the um, markings on it so I'll give that a go and see how I go Now you'll have to forgive me, I haven't used a tripod before, this will just give you an idea. I don't need to saturate it. I'm just trying to get enough on it so that the paint sticks. Missed a bit. And again, this is just the primer layer. Okay, so the next step, I'm just going to try to put a little bit of matte black so that it helps me create some shadows, hopefully. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to build up layers. The lighting here is not very good, but now when I paint the shell of a car, the process is a bit different and I'll talk you through that. But for a motor, this is fine. So I can already see it's getting some nice layers and shadows. So I'm going really light. You get the idea. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to call that done. So it's probably not going to show up very well, um, but I I think the idea has worked well. It's given it some shadows and highlights, and it kind of makes it look like it's already been weathered a bit, you know, like a bit of oil or whatever else is on there. And I just felt like if I sprayed it with just grey, it would come out looking like a toy. You know, there wouldn't be any depth to it. And depth is a really difficult thing to get your head around with a model. You, you see it if it's not there, um, but it's hard to pick out, you know, the benefit of it till you sit it side by side with one that you haven't sort of weathered or put some shadows on or whatever. So I'm happy with it. I think it's come out well. You'll have to forgive my filming. It was the first time I used my tripod. Um, but yeah, anyway, we'll move on. So you can see I've put some panel liner in there and it's really subdued that super bright chrome. Moving on. 
So I just thought I would make a suggestion at this point in the build. When you are working on the rear of um, the rear of a truck or you know a vehicle where you're worried about there being twist, I'm trying to let it dry Could, because you've got to line up the drive shafts and the you know the gear boxes and axles and all the rest of it. I've actually put the wheels on to try and I've only just press fitted them on just to weigh the truck down evenly and so that I can see that when it sets the wheels will be even and time will tell if that is the best way to do it but it's helped me to adjust and tweak it so that I'm happy with you know how everything intersects and settles and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so update. I've got the chassis together, but I'm going to deviate a little bit from the order I have to, I'm supposed to build it in, because I'm going to paint as much as in one pass as I can. And I've got as many parts on as I feel like I can to still get even coverage. And there's some other things like the tanks under the battery boxes and that that I can't put on yet. And the gas tanks and that sort of stuff that I'm going to prime and paint separately. So while this dries, because I can't prime it yet, it's still a bit wet, I'm going to start on the interior. So I'll check back soon. well covered not too heavy just trying to get a light coat across all of it okay for the next step I'm just gonna put some matte black Just going super light and I'll go over it again. So the lighting's probably not great out here, it's a bit stormy today, but something like that, you get the idea. Don't worry if you miss a bit, you can always pick it out with a brush or whatever. Okay, so we're back. Just before turning the camera off, I just did exactly the same thing, but I turned the model upside down, well, rotated it. I'm using my Tamiya spray stand and it's got, you know, it comes with a number of these. So you just clip it to, you know, a part of the model where you don't care if you get paint and you're happy to touch it up by hand or whatever. And it, it's very helpful. I do have the other version of this, which is the one for painting cars and you sit the car body on it and it grips them differently. Um, both stands are, very important for me, anyway. Just ignore the paint on my hands. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to mention a couple of my thoughts. So, one of the reasons I assembled a lot of this first is there were a lot of parts to connect to each other 
And if you pre-paint them and get glue on them, which I will because I'm, you know, a novice, the glue will strip any of the the paint you've done, you know, the, around that part, you know, if it runs out of a seam or, you know, you get it on your fingertips or whatever. And I thought there's just no way I'm going to be able to assemble this without stripping back paintwork I've done and, you know, I knew I would get glue runs and whatever else, you know, the usual mistakes we make. What it meant was by doing that first and then painting it, a lot of that's hidden. So if you get a glue run or you get, you know, some sort of an issue, it kind of hides it because you, you're painting over it all at the end. So what does that mean? It means when I glue parts to this, as the, the build continues, I will just have to scrape back with my X-Acto blade wherever those connections are. You know, if I've got to add a, a piece just so I get a clean contact surface. But that's still preferable to me. That's, that's not difficult to do. Another thing I thought I would mention is, particularly when you're doing a, like a complex assembly where you've got like a number of parts and you're worried about, well, how am I going to get the spray paint all through them? I would say start spraying those areas because what I've, and I, and I mean do that before you paint the overall piece. I say that because in years past, you know, I would get a thing like this and I would, I'd go give it a beautiful even coat and I'd zoom in and go, oh my gosh, you know, I missed... You know, there's all these missed areas in there and then you've got to add paint even though there's already enough on that area so on the neighboring parts you end up with way too much paint so by starting and going okay well i know this bit's going to be tricky and you you start by filling in the hidden areas when you come back out you go okay well i really don't actually need that much on the back anymore because I've already painted a lot of the surrounding areas. That's what you want. You don't want to use a bunch of paint and then add a ton more and find out that, you know, on the rails where you already had them covered, you've got a bunch of extra paint because you, you were trying to get more of it in, into the, the axles. So paint the, the hidden bits first and then deal with what you're left with to fill in the gaps. Um, that's probably all I'll put in this video. Um, I'll, I'll break the video in half just so that it doesn't run forever. Um, and when I come back, I'll have part two. I had a look at the um, the engine and I think that color is gonna look really good in there. You know, that sort of shadowy gray, you know, against the, against the, the black chassis. I think that's gonna look good. So, all right, I'll catch you in part two and I hope this has been helpful. I'm enjoying making these videos and if you're still watching, thank you.